My name is Dawn Kassark and I'm a part of Food Micro Lab. This is my video. I chose to make a sourdough starter and I followed the lab notebook pretty... Uh, I don't think I made any changes. I did a few different things, I, um, but we're going to start out with this starter. So um, I'm going to show you a video of my starter feeding it. And then I'm also going to show you a video of a couple other starters that I made. I made a rice starter and then I also made a, another starter with um, wheat berries um, that I soaked and then kind of added some of the white starter and the rice starter to it during the week. Um, so I have a couple of videos of that that'll kind of go through and then I'm going to go through the process of baking the bread um, and then show you kind of how it turned out. So I hope you like this and um, I should also have a conclusion at the end. So here we go. This is the starter right before it's normal feeding time. So I'm going to temp at what it is now and then what it is when I'm done mixing it. As you can see, there's a lot of really nice activity. It's got a lot of bubbles on the surface. It has grown a little bit today. It has bubbles all throughout. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take half, half of this away and then I'll put in 50 grams of flour, in pea flour, and 50 grams of bottled water. And then we'll mix it and let it sit for one last day before we use it. I also made a rye starter, which uh, turned out really nicely. See when you do this, see those beautiful bubbles that are just all throughout the starter. It's really nice. The other experimental starter I did was this one. This uh, was also crushed up from wheat berries as well. I soaked the wheat berries and then put them in the food processor and then I added water to it and then as I was growing the other two starters I would put a little dab of both starters in with the fermenting wheat berries. So this one um you know it's kind of a mis mishmash so I don't know that I would use it in bread but it definitely uh, the fermentation over the last two days it uh, got faster and more interesting. I had the leftover starter that wasn't used and it was in this plastic container on top of my oven while the bread was baking. It basically baked as well. Super interesting. So this is the starter this morning. It's a little bit um, too bubbly and there's some liquid in the corners like you can see in this corner, uh, which is here. A little bit of water build up. <clears throat> I made the recipe from the lab notebook, which is a quarter cup of vegetable oil, a tablespoon of honey, and a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna put the starter in here and it says to just add flour until it comes together. And then we're gonna bake it and see what happens. This is after an addition of about a half a cup of all purpose flour and about a quarter cup, actually less a cup of rye flour. One thing that I've learned as a baker is that <laughs> to add flour slowly uh, because you can always add more. You can't necessarily take it out. <laughs> so the dough came together about about after about a cup. So you've got a really nice dough here. I'm going to knead it a little bit more on the counter with my hands covered with oil. And then I'm going to put it into a different bowl and we're going to bulk for a minute over the oven while the oven is heating. And then we'll bake it. So you put a little bit of flour on the counter. And this is how you knead. You're going to keep folding it over on itself. Making sure to keep it tacky. Anytime you feel that bread starting to rip in any place, you're going to want to put flour or oil down. Make sure you're not stressing out that gluten way too much. So, I'm going to do a 
little bit of a pre-shape here. Pull all my ends in. Put a little bit more oil on it. And then we're gonna see if it starts to grow. I'll let it sit for about 30 minutes. It's got a little bit of a spring back to it. Not much, but um, since the recipe didn't call for any bulk from it, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in the oven and see if it has oven spring. So I will oil the Dutch oven and then I'm gonna slice across the top here. So CO2 is somewhere to go. And then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Here is the finished product. Didn't get a ton of rice, um, which mm, kind of new with the ferment and everything. So it's still really hot. Got a really nice hollow sound there. Feels firm. Pretty sure it's done. So I'm going to let it cool and then I will taste it. To get a slight blister here, which is good, especially for this kind of just kind of throwing everything in all, all at the same time. So, so this bread is actually not even baked all the way. Um, probably could have stayed in the oven longer, but I don't know that it would have helped it rise anymore. Um, so yeah, that's the finished product. I may eat, like try a little bit off the end here where it's actually cooked, but that's how it turned out. So in conclusion, it seems that the starter didn't have enough uh, volume or enough microorganisms to create a bread that would rise correctly. Um, it could also be part of the recipe. It could also be the oven. Um, there's numerous factors in baking that will <laughs> contribute to these issues. Um, it's part of the reason I don't actually bake at home <laughs> is because I'm so used to baking in a professional environment and used to having all those factors controlled that it's actually really difficult for me <laughs> to bake at home because I feel like I can't like do my best because <laughs> I'm not used to I'm not used to not having my tools of the trade um, but it was really interesting to make starters uh, from scratch I've always worked with starters that have already been established um, and then worked with feeding them every day and kind of noticing the differences in, in temperature and, and when weather changes and stuff like that so it was interesting to actually do it in my own home versus uh, in a commercial environment uh, so I think everything turned out as well as it could and I think this experiment was a really good it showed a lot about how fermentation is super important in our food system and in so many food products that we have and make and there's so many fermented food products that I just am such a fan of and so this was fun to be able to do at home and actually kind of work with you know, these things that I've always worked with and, and see how it turned out here. So I think I might actually start baking bread in the, in the Dutch oven, just not with a starter. <laughs> I'll probably do yeasted or um, breads with fat in them. So it's a lot easier to bake in the oven at home. You don't necessarily need that component of steam. So yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you ever want to bake bread at home, this is a great way to try it out and just see what happens and, you know, learn about those microorganisms in our, in our, on our skin and the air all around us that uh, make some really great foods. So thanks.